Friday's Telegraph Next and a council has published a handy new pamphlet for navigating the dystopian hellscape that will soon be upon us. Well, this is one of those stories. All these stories are exactly the same, which is the death of love. That they, that they don't want us to be... That's happy. not what the story's about. The story's about <laughs> an inclusive <laughs> language guide, Lewis. An inclusive yeah. language yeah, guide. Yeah, where, where does this come from? If Tell they, us the story and then you the can death have of your love, say. Oh, my God. You and, you and the rules with this, this You and with the actual headlines. It's, 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 like, it's, it's, like, it's like there's a, a formula you've got to follow. And that's Ofcom. We have a format that we... <laughs> that Ofcom insists on it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So this is in the Telegraph that... That there's this thing called the local government association, which I think is a, which has all the local governments, yes, which is like the councils and things, yeah. And they c- came up with a guide, uh, which insists on, which doesn't insist, but suggests that local authorities use positive language and not negative language. Negative language they call calling people ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that's mum and dad is outlawed mm, according to this. Mum and dad, expat, which I am. Deprived neighborhoods, which I live in. Second generation, which my kids are. Lifestyle choices. That's you. And That's you all over. So this really affects you. Economic it, migrant. It does affect me. And you know what? Maybe they're right. Reading these making me cry. It and is so boring, though, isn't it, Josh? I mean, we get, constantly get these inclusive language guys, really patronising, just d- endless, interminable documents telling people which words they should and shouldn't say. Isn't it getting really dull now at this point? Well, it's beyond dull, and it's amazing that it's still continuing. And look, yeah. Leo is off having a baby. Congratulations, Leo. Uh, with let, the other birthing parents. With the other, forget about that person. Yeah. That's not the birth- maybe, but, maybe it's wrong but to the call point, it, call it a baby. Here, what he would say is, we're talking about deficiencies in, in, in money and the government... Where, and they're still managing to find the money to pay for Laurel Brown, an equity, diversity and inclusion expert, to write this report and send it around. There's a lot of money in it, but also sometimes it's a little bit serious. I mean, like the Royal Borough of Greenwich uh, sent out an inclusive language guide back in April, which said that we, people should avoid phrases such as his and her, boy and girl. This went out to schools and now, just the, in the last few weeks, they've been sending them out to parents and teachers that's actually quite sinister. And also in that document, they completely misrepresent the law. They actually say that when the Equality Act refers to sex, they mean gender identity. No, they mean sex. And actually, when you've got local councils misrepresenting the law and, and trying to force-feed force feed people with these ideas of what words they can and cannot use, I think it's slightly authoritarian, if you don't mind me saying. And these, this is the local governments. Mm. It's, it's a huge, huge problem. So I, I, I totally agree with you. There's one little thing I will say is that they're talking about referring to a, per, per, a person's ethnicity rather than their race. Mm. I kind of agree with that because race is a misnomer. It doesn't actually exist. Yeah, but the thing is, Josh, but, right? no, no, I'm not saying like, this is a suggestion. I'm just saying that I think that actually that is a, a, we can a positive nego- But we can negotiate those sort of things without these edicts from high. Oh, no, no, of, you know of course. I mean? like, but I'm just saying I happen to agree with that particular thing. I'm not well, saying that we have to do a big pamphlet well, they, and spend they, thousands and thousands of pounds to send that around to all the local government authorities. Well, they do say it's not binding, and I do just wish that more local councils would just stand up and say, no, we're not going to do it. That would probably solve it. 